Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. It is celebrated the first Sunday after Easter. The events of the resurrection of Jesus Christ are so powerful that we celebrated the last week that over the course of eight days, these are called the octave of Easter. And in the church's liturgy are considered as celebrating one day. The eight days of the resurrection are really the one day of the new creation when we are risen to new life. They are one single event. In today's gospel, we see this one single event in the opening line. When the risen Jesus appeared to his frightened disciples behind locked doors, this took place on the evening of that first day of the week. During that octave, or eight days, of the resurrection, the risen Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. St. Augustine, in his sermon 156, called the eight days of Easter the summary of the days of mercy. He called the octave the days of mercy and pardon. That's what we celebrate today, Divine Mercy Sunday. We see this mercy of God not just in sacred scripture and sacred tradition, but in also the church's magisterium of the church. The church has recognized that on February 22, 1931, the risen Jesus appeared to a simple nun named Sister Faustina in Poland. When Jesus appeared to the nun, he said, I want and the image, the image that you see here to my right, I want the image to be solemnly blessed on the first Sunday after Easter, and I want it to be venerated publicly so that every soul may know about it. We see how the red and white rays from this sacred picture gush out of Jesus' heart. They don't just ooze out, they gush out. Uh, just yesterday, I had a, a valve on a pipe break, and I had to, we had to fix it by turning off the main valve. And the water didn't just ooze out, it gushed out. And that's what happened to Jesus on the cross when his sacred heart was pierced with a lance. Blood and water gushed out because of love. And this gushing out of the red and white rays represents the holy sacraments of baptism and the Eucharist. The saintly Pope John Paul the Great said in his homily canonizing Sister Faustina that the whole message of divine mercy is strictly connected with the Easter mystery of the resurrection, of Jesus' redemption, of his death, his agony, his excruciating pain, his passion, his resurrection, his ascension, the sending of the Holy Spirit. This simple nun was the cook at her convent, and yet Jesus chose her to prepare for his second coming. We sang in the responsorial psalm, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Just think of all your sins of your entire life in one little drop of water. And then, you know, if you ever go to Ocean Beach in San Francisco, take that little drop of water which contains all of your sins and my sins, and then throw that little drop into the Pacific Ocean. That's kind of like God's mercy. He has an ocean of mercy for all our sins. During the eighth day, the risen Lord Jesus said to his apostles, Peace be with you. And then Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit on them. And he says, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive. They are forgiven. And if they are retained, if they're not forgiven... If you have declared them unforgiven, they are unforgiven. Jesus, our Lord, gave the divine power to forgive sins to ordinary sinful human beings. Here we see Jesus giving us the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. We don't baptize you again after you commit a sin. What we do instead is we have the sacrament of penance. And this 
is what our Lord said to Sister Faustina about the sacrament of penance. And this is from a diary that she wrote. I encourage you to buy this if you can and reflect on it. Jesus said to Sister Faustina, When the priest acts in my place, he does not act of himself, but I act through him. His wishes are mine. We go to confession because Jesus has given it to us. I mean, think about this. After we sin, we should tell God, you know, God, I'm sorry, I committed a sin, I screwed up, I'm going to try again. But even if you were to have 99.999% certainty that God has forgiven you, and he does, with the sacrament of penance, you have a 100% certainty that you are forgiven of all your sins. It's sacramental. It's, we can touch it and we know it. And so the priest in confession has received that authority to forgive sins when he says, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, move on. Turn a new page. It's gone. It's wiped away. When Jesus appeared to Sister Faustina, he said, whoever approaches the fountain of life on this day, this Divine Mercy Sunday, will be granted complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. And punishment. This day is so powerful because of the resurrection that when we go to confession before or on the Divine Mercy Sunday, not only are our sins forgiven, but the punishment due to them are forgiven and wiped away. Baptismal innocence is restored. There is, see, see, the idea is that with a plenary indulgence, it is a full pardoning of the sins, as opposed to a partial pardoning of the sins. A plenary indulgence is granted for those who honor the divine mercy image with confession and holy communion. Because when one commits a sin and goes to confession, we are a pardon of that, but the punishment due to sin must be made up and restored. That justice must be made up. Otherwise, we have to, we have to do penance here or in purgatory for it. But on Divine Mercy Sunday, when we have firm purpose of amendment, we say, God, I love you and I'm sorry I did this, the punishment due to sin in purgatory is removed. Complete punishment is gone. The soul that will go to confession and, re and receive Holy Communion. Because you're receiving Holy Communion in the state of grace. You're not supposed to receive communion in the state of mortal sin. When you receive Holy Communion, you, ob you and I obtain complete forgiveness of our sins. So yes, we can prepare ourselves properly. And here are some quotes. One quote from the Divine Mercy Sunday. My daughter, tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and shelter for souls, especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are opened. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. And on that day, the divine floodgates through which graces flow are open. Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as red as scarlet. My mercy is so great that no mind, be it angel of man or man, will be able to fathom it, even from all eternity. Mankind will not have peace until it turns to the fount of my mercy. And if he, let the greatest sinners place their trust in my mercy. He who refuses, write this, 
Before I come as a just judge, I first open wide the door of my mercy. He who refuses to pass through the door of my mercy must pass through the door of my judgment and justice. And so our Lord here reveals to this simple nun, this simple cook, the fount of his mercy. And finally, as I, I want to close here by encouraging us, even after the 12 p.m. Mass today, we will have a procession and uh, opportunities to honor the divine mercy. We must also ourselves, having celebrated and received God's mercy, be merciful ourselves, as Father mentioned. As we see in the first reading, the first Christian community were one mind and heart. They were in, the Greek word is koinonia. They were in communion with each other. Today, the members of the church and our holy faith are in much confusion. There is discord everywhere, even within the ranks of the church, where even members of the church do not follow her teachings. But returning to the divine mercy, the merciful love of the heart that gushed forth blood and water, Jesus will grant us peace. Let us celebrate this and acclaim like Thomas did, my Lord and my God, that Jesus is our Savior. Let us run to his mercy and be covered with his most precious blood. I close with a story about my baptismal godmother. She passed away many years ago in Florida. She had an image of the divine mercy up on her wall. And as she was, her final words before she breathed her last were, after looking at the image of the divine mercy, she said, God, I trust you. And then she passed. Let those words, Jesus, I trust you, also be on our lips, especially in our darkest hours. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Amen.